Okay, guys, so here's the, uh, the fist resistance here. Let's save this as, let's save this as uh, version 4MD for multiple device. Now again, for design purposes, it's just a good habit to get into coming up with different versions. Okay, now let's collapse this for a second. So we have these external CSS documents, which we created in our previous video. This was created again by going to modify, modify, web queries. I click my default settings and then I set the path to those particular files. Okay, Dreamer will do the whole thing for you if you know what you're doing, specifically if you take my lessons, take my courses, because I will make it so simple, it's frightening. Notice this whole series, we haven't touched any code here. We did everything with the Dreamer interface. Okay, now let's just keep this simple. I'm going to select these rules right now. I'm going to select the rules in order to affect the rules. Now what I probably want to do here I'm going to take the H1 tag and put it up here where it should go to the right before the H1 tag, H2 tag, followed by wrapper, header, nav, section, aside, footer. Okay, make a change, save a change. Okay, now this is going to be for the desktop CSS, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Watch this. I can select these rules from here to here. They're now selected so they can be affected. I'm going to come up here to the top right hand corner and I'm going to copy or command C. So I'm going to share with you where it's kept. Now I'm going to select the CSS rule for desktop. Select this these, these external CSS file and simply paste, copy, paste. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing for tablet size because by default it's all going to be the same by default with some minor tweaking. We're going to select tablet. We don't have to copy again because it's already on our clipboard. We're simply going to say paste. Okay, we're going to scroll up to the iPhone. Make sure it's selected in order to be affected. I need to select it. Then paste. Now, important step here. These changes haven't been saved. So here's my external CSS documents. Now, what I could do to save some time, I could just go to file and save all related files. Or I could just save all. Now, save all the difference is going to save every document regardless where it is as long as it's open. We want to see all related files. So these files are all related. Now to make this less confusing here, let's close down all of our windows except the last file that we just did. So command o, open, open file, Re open and sort this by date on my Macintosh. Makes this very simple. Double click. Okay, now we can start building our responsive design. Now, very important step here, okay? The desktop is all good to go. Minus whatever tweaks you want to make, that's totally up to you. Now, the tablet size, so let's think about this. For the tablet size, by default, because we copied and pasted, the wrapper size, remember we set this by default, wrapper is still 100%. It's still 100% for the wrapper tag, but then it's max width I want to change. So I'm going to change the wrapper's max width to equal the CSS style's max width which is 768, it says right there. How simple can that be? So I select the tag, make sure that the max width tag is selected. In order to be affected, it needs to be selected. Make sure you're in the correct style sheet, which is tablet. So I come down here to max width, and I save that, change that to 768. Okay, now, just because we can, I'm just gonna change the wrapper to a different background color. I'm going to double click the wrapper and change the background color of wrapper just so you can visually see what's about to happen. Let's change this to red. Okay, make a change, save a change. Now, keep in mind, we change the external style sheets. So if you change the external style sheets, you're going to have to basically save the external style sheets because these are external style sheets. Okay, now watch what happens. If I'm in desktop, I get my normal style sheets. But if I click to tablet size, the background changes to red because it's now a tablet size. Now, without going into great detail on this, and again, I'm just going to give you if what can be done, how simple it is to set up a responsive design. Now, in video series that hopefully you will go and sign up for today because it comes out next Monday for a simple low fee. If you guys think this is expensive, you know what? I hate to be rude, guys, but then don't subscribe to my, to my services anymore. I mean, I hate to tell you that, but for $39, for, 
for a three month period. It's not $39 a month. It's $39 for three months. It's a subscription service. You can cancel anytime. So if you want to all you can from me for 39 bucks and then, and then cancel, hey, you can do that. I have no problem with that. So if you don't think my techniques are worth $39, then quite frankly, guys, if you can't afford $39, you need to go do something else with your time. You need to go basically, I don't know, ever go get a degree in rocket science or something. Because if $39 is going to break your budget, then perhaps web design and development is not for you. But if you want to learn my techniques based on my 25 years of doing Adobe software training, which I teach all programs, by the way, I highly suggest you do that. Okay, now what we could do, keep in mind that the body tag, this is just basically the body tag for the original tag, which was set to 1M. Now we're in tablet size, so we can simply set this, let's make this 0.85 M's, just slightly smaller, just so it's slightly smaller. Okay, and we can do the same thing with the H1 tag. The H1 tag was 1.6, and from tablet size, Let's make this 1.5, just slightly smaller. And also let's make the H2 tag slightly smaller. Again, we set up the master document originally so we know what to deal what we're dealing with here. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, 1.2. All right. Now let's go to the iPhone. Okay, so iPhone wrapper tag. iPhone wrapper tag is still set to 100 percent It's still 100 percent but then the max width we're going to change to 320. Okay, now just because we can, so you can visually see the change happening, let's change this to make this, this pink color. And this is the iPhone setting. So now the maximum width here for the upper tag is going to be set to not, not in 60, but 320. So see, see how simple I'm making this? Then the, H, the body tag. Now the body tag originally was set to. Now, if this helps you too, another production technique, if you feel more comfortable, in this particular case, we copy and paste it from the original document. If you want to then build your tablet and then copy and then paste that into your iPhone, this way it's smaller than the iPhone, the iPhone is smaller than the tablet. If you want to do that, I highly encourage that as well. I just want to keep this simple without confusing you. All right, so let's make this, let's make this 0.65 M spaces. So therefore, let's make the H1 tag 1.3, and let's make the H2 tag, just because we can, 1.2, or whatever size you want to make it. So again, make a change, save a change. So in CS6, you can do this in CS6 by clicking down here. In CS5.5, you can do this too. You would just have to go and change your sizes from here. So watch this. I'm going to basically just close this browse. I'm going to double click to close this here. Wait a second. Here we go. Okay. So this is what the page will look like in desktop mode. This is what the page looks like in tablet mode. This is what the page looks like in iPhone mode. Now, in tablet mode, I just want to share with you, notice that in tablet mode, that very important step here, in tablet mode, the aside tag is getting cut off. So how can we fix this? Well, here's a very simple way we can fix this. Okay, we're going to double click here. We're going to go back to the tablet mode. Now, how much space do we have to work with? 769 pixels, right? 769. So let's do some basic math here. Okay, so let's just say, let's go to the section tag for a second. Now, you can do this with the calculator or math right inside of Dreamweaver. It's up to you. So 768. Okay. Now, I just want to keep this simple. Simple, simple, simple. So remember this number 590 for a second. So if we want to, we can actually copy that. Now, what's the difference between 960 and 768? So let's cut that for a second. So we can paste it back in there. So 960 minus 7. 68 is a difference of 192 pixels. Right? You with me on this? So now I can take what I just copied, so I can paste minus minus 192. Now again, what this is going to do, this is just a very simple approach here, guys. You could technically, I'm going to hit the OK button on this. So I could technically skim a little bit off the nav tag, a little bit off the section tag, 
little bit off the aside tag, but in this particular case, I just minus the aside tag. Okay, so I just want to share that technique with you. Okay, so it's just, I, I just want to, you know, again, it's the conceptual understanding of what we're doing here. Okay, now for the CSS, for the iPhone, what I probably want to do iPhone here is I don't want things to flow to the left. I just want things to follow sequentially. What do I mean by that? So header tag, we're going to set the header tag. Basically, it's going to default to the parent tag, which is fine. Nav tag, we're going to double click nav tag and set nav tag to be 320 pixels wide. So let's set nav tag to be 320. Again, it's a very simplistic approach here. We're going to do, we're going to do five pixels of padding which means that we want to keep this at 320 and it's minus 10. We're not going to float this to the left. Now, don't compute none with nothing. We're not going to float this, so we're going to say nothing. Not none. None is to override the default. So I get this happening. So this is for iPhone. Okay. So then I'm going to select section and do the same thing. So section is going to be 320. So section is going to be 320 pixels Y. Let's put 10 pixels of padding, which means I need to minus what? Minus, minus 20. And I'm not going to float this. I'm not going to float this. So float none. And the same thing with this. I'll make rid of that. And it's okay. Incidentally, nav tag, I think I might have forgot to delete the margin if I had a margin. No, I didn't have a margin. Okay, now for the aside tag, the same thing. We're going to double click the aside tag. And again, guys, this is a very simplistic approach. I'm going to go into great detail on this in my video series, my premium video series. I can't give everything away for free, guys. Just like you work for a living, well, so do I. So it's support what I do. Okay, so 320 pixels. 320 pixels. Again, it's not going to float. We're going to double click that. Let's just give this... Let's pick a wacky number, 12 pixels of padding, which means I need to minus 24 and no margin to the left. Okay, so my iPhone, what's going to happen here is this is just going to follow sequentially. Just going to follow sequentially. Now, of course, the nav tag, you put the nav across the page, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have, using the same document, we made some minor changes. Now, for an iPhone, if you want to change these icons, you can style that inside your CSS. It's really, really that simple. So this tells you how to make a simple fluid design, a simple fluid design using the same document with three separate external CSS using my proven techniques. Everything we've done today can be done in CS 5.5 as well as CS 6, which is the new version which launched today. The difference being you get these icons down here. So enjoy the day. Carpe diem. Go to thinklearnearn.com. Get off your butts, guys. Do something with your life and buy my videos. I'm not trying to uh, be comical here. I I'm here to help you. But if you really want my help, you really want to learn detail, how to do things the right way, this is just a tip of the iceberg is what I'm going to share in my $39 videos that you'll get for three months. You can subscribe. And you can cancel anytime. Of course, that goes into a to Z for template development, for e-commerce solutions, for database development. It's a whole gamut. Plus, I offer free video updates with the $30 subscription for three months. Every week, new videos come out. So talk to you soon, Carpe Diem. Also, follow me on Facebook, Think Learn, Earn, I'm sorry, FB, FB.com forward slash Think Learn, Earn, Twitter, Twitter.com forward slash Think Learn, Earn. Talk to you soon.